And I want to invite someone up. And I've heard many, many testimonies. But I have never been as personally impacted by this testimony because I'm going to invite my mum up to come and share her testimony. So mum, come up. Thank you. Oh my goodness me. Um, I am so in the anointing right now. The anointing is flowing through this room and the presence of God is here. Um, my name is Angela, for those who don't know, and I want to share a testimony. Before I knew that Jesus is alive, before I knew that Jesus saves. And I want to stand here to be a witness to him. And it started off with me, um, I was born into a Roman Catholic family and uh, I had wonderful um, father and mother and quite a lovely um, upbringing. And um, when I was about nine years old, um, I was at the convent and the nuns were showing a movie, something about God. And I remembered being touched by God just gently, just a touch. And I thought, oh, I think I need to become a nun when I grow up. I wanted this God that I would become a nun. And then I weighed up the options and I thought, no, I want to be married. And I want to have children of my own. So I decided I won't become a nun. And as I grew up, at the age of 20, I married and had a baby by the time I was 21. And I had a beautiful baby boy. And at 10 weeks and one day, my baby died unexpectedly. And it was a cot death, so they say. And I was absolutely devastated. I was racked with grief over the loss of this baby. And um, my father said to me, have you baptized him? And I said, no, we didn't have time. But I did ask the nurse when I realized something dreadful was happening to please baptize him for me. And my father said, well, he's in limbo. And I said, you mean he's not with God? He's in limbo? And he said, yes, he's in limbo. And I said, well, why would God give me a baby cause me to love this baby and then kill him and then sling him into limbo. And I said, if that is your God, Daddy, I want nothing to do with him. And my life changed from that moment onwards. I became rebellious um, angry. I think I was angry with God, although I didn't know that at the time. And I did everything I could which would upset my parents because it was so contrary to how I was brought up. And so my life went from bad to worse. And I reached a point where I began to look into other spiritual things to see if there was an answer. And I got involved in the New Age. I got involved in tarot card reading, going to mediums, um, wearing amulets or having one. And I was just believing into that side of things. 
And then that wasn't enough. I began to do witchcraft. I got involved with white witchcraft. And of course, we know now that there is no difference between white or black. Witchcraft is witchcraft. But I got involved in that. And I reached a point where nothing was working in my life. In fact, things were getting increasingly worse. So I began to do transcendental meditation. And I was told that as I did that, I would get rid of all the bad karma that comes into your life. And you will meet the God of pure consciousness. And I began to be a faithful student of transcendental meditation. And I didn't meet God. And I was getting more and more angry. And every time I mentioned it, they said, no, it's bad karma coming out. And of course, it was bad karma going in. And I was then aware that the enemy was trying to take me out. And uh, there was a couple of occasions when I, I slipped in the bath and I banged my eye quite severely on the, on the tap and um, uh, sort of got up. And then I fell again exactly on the same eye right on the top of the tap. And I knew that something dreadful was happening. So at that time, I was just a housewife. And I shouldn't say just a housewife because that's really an important role. Um, but I was in the house and I was just vacuuming the, um, the carpet and my television was on. And there was a preacher called Louis Palau. And he was on the television, and I didn't know what these preachers were. I had no idea. And, but I remember as I walked into the room, I had a touch from God. And I felt that touch. And I didn't understand what it was, so I just carried on my life. So it was only two years later when I was still down the road that led me into a pit that I decided that I wanted to do um, Eastern philosophy. And a friend at work introduced me to that. And it was at this moment while I was traveling to work in London that I saw a book advertised on the underground that said, Power for Living. And of course, it caught my attention because it said, Power for Living. So I sent off for that book. One day, I went home from work. I had this book with Eastern philosophy. And um, a friend of mine was supposed to come and give me some meditation to help me with my life to help, help things improve. And um, he didn't turn up that night. But when I walked in the door, there was the book that I had ordered, which said Power for Living. And I opened it and I flicked through it. And to my horror, it was biblical. It had a whole load of scriptures. And I went, no. This is not what I want. And I put it on the side, and I waited for my friend to come around and give me exercises so we could levitate and go a little bit higher. And he didn't turn out, but God had a plan for me that night. And so I thought, okay, I will go to bed early, and I will read my book um, on Eastern philosophy and see what I could get involved in there. And as I was going upstairs and turning off the lights, the book Power for Living caught my eye. And being curious and delving in everything you could possibly think of, I picked up the book and I took it upstairs. And I put both books down at my bedside table. And to my surprise, I couldn't make a decision which book to pick up. And so very early on, God was teaching me about spiritual things. 
and that I was being pulled to one book and then I was being pulled to another one. So I sat down and I thought, what's the problem? Pick up a book, read, put it down, pick up another one. What's the big thing about this book? And eventually I picked up the book called Powerful Living. And as I opened it, it was speaking scriptures and then some scriptures I had learned at the convent about Jesus dying on the cross began to come alive. And the more I read the book, and it was saying to me that I wasn't a Christian until I was born again. And I thought, they don't know what they're saying. I'm Catholic. I am born again. And I am going to heaven forgetting all the things I was doing. And um, so while I was reading the scriptures, something suddenly happened. The scriptures came alive. And the one word that spoke to me said, Jesus is alive. And it blew me apart. And it caught my attention. And I said, Jesus are you alive? What does that mean? Because if you're alive, I must know it. And as I said these words, suddenly Jesus was there in the room and he was standing with his arms opened up. And he said, Angela, you're going the wrong way. Come, come to me. And I got down on my knees and I repented, and I said, I know that I am such a sinner. I repent of every sin I have committed, and I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to come in, come into my life. All those words just came, just came to me, and I was so exhausted after I prayed that prayer. I literally fell into bed and went to sleep, and as I was asleep, suddenly I had a vision. And I saw myself as a newborn baby. And I was all wrapped up in the fetal position with my hands under my chin, and I was all curled up. And I had a white shroud or swaddling clothes, something white all around me. And at the top was an opening. And at the opening, there was the most horrendous evil outside. And I could see talons going like that, and they couldn't touch. They couldn't touch me. And I didn't understand that until much later, when I began to read the Bible, and I began to um, read particularly um, John 3 in which in the book um, of John in chapter 3, you know, Jesus said to Nicodemus, um, you've got to be born again. And Nicodemus was puzzled by that saying and said, well, how can I be born again? How can I go back a second time into my mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, verily, verily, I say to you, you must be born again before you could see the kingdom of heaven. And of course, I realized that that vision was John 3. And my whole life changed after that. God began to reveal his love, his love for me, that God is love. And he began to connect me in the spirit with him so that I literally fell in love with God even though I didn't understand it all. I just literally fell in love. And that love hasn't died away. That love is still there, it's still passionate. And so I stand here tonight to say to you that Jesus is alive. I truly am a witness that he's alive. And that when you get born again, it's a literal um, experience that you actually get born again. So Jesus saves, amen.
Amen, amen. You can see how uh, my life was incredibly impacted. And um, I praise God because mum had a powerful encounter with the Lord Jesus. She got baptised with the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues before she even ever turned up at a church. Hey, 